Clive, what exactly do you plan on doing when you find this dominant of fire? What do you think? I'll show him the mercy he showed my brother. And cut out the tongue of any man who tries to talk me out of it. All right. Forest dark enough as it is. I'd say that they do quite a good job at giving the environment a sort of a sense of life, like going up onto that cliff and looking out there, you get the sort of impression of the kind of open worlds that we had seen in other games, a sort of a Skyrim kind of thing. But because you don't actually have to go out there and you don't have to wander through the forest and climb the mountain and all that kind of stuff, they can give it a bit more of a realistic look. Because as impressive as Skyrim or Oblivion or Fallout or Breath of the Wild or any of those things were, the world itself does have to be kind of sparse in order to exist in a video game. Just because the world can't be as big as real life because, you know, it has to be a freaking video game, doesn't it? It has to be an environment that you can navigate, you can walk through, um, somebody has to make it, you know? But when you just walk out on a cliff and you look out there, they can have everything be sort of more realistic. You know, going out and standing on a cliff like that and looking out there, you see like, oh my god, that looks really freaking far away. And it is. Whereas in something like Oblivion, where you in a similar situation, you stand out there and then you look off into the distance, you sort of get the actual impression that what you're looking at isn't miles away, what you're looking at may be within five minutes walking distance. Just a stupid little observation. So Clive is determined to track down this second icon of fire. Now, it's, uh, you know, it's pretty obvious that he is the second icon of fire. It's not you know, I don't quite understand all of the lore of this world yet, but it seems as though it's rather unusual that there'd be two icons of any one particular element. So the fact that the second one exists is, I guess, a hard pill to swallow for a lot of people. I still have these cheat items on. <laughs> the idea that these... A second one would exist is something that a lot of people would probably dismiss. But he seems to understand it. Like, there's definitely a second one there. He saw it, and, you know, okay. But it's obvious that he is the second one, and he doesn't understand that yet. <laughs> so, I, don't, I wonder how long it's going to be before he comes to grip with that reality. And he's intended on, he wants revenge. That's his primary motivator. And Sid is trying to help him get that revenge. I guess he sees him as, like, he's a he's a bearer, or a branded, or whatever they everyone wants to call him. And, like, okay, so we, well, I guess he's not a bearer, is he? He's a dominant, but Sid thinks he's a bearer. And he's trying to help him, but he's also a skilled soldier, and he could be somebody that could help his band of refugees so maybe he maybe Sid thinks he helps him do this and then Clive will stick around and help Sid too I don't know we'll see quiet the royal scout someone's far from home let's follow him And? Hey, they're just down that way. All of them. Grieger's my witness. Excellent. We move. I, 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 I don't understand. Have I not proven loyal? Ugh. 
It is true my liege values loyalty above all else. <laughs> but were you not quick to betray your countrymen for the promise of coin? <laughs> Intelligences. If we can capture her. You! Weapons on the ground, Imperials! <sighs> Let's get this over with then. I like this idea that Clive is going to be misidentified as an Imperial. Of course, he, he was, in a sense. He was one of their slaves, and he was fighting for them. But I guess it's down to... The, I haven't really paid enough of attention to the mark tattoo on his face to see if it has a different pattern than the bearers of other kingdoms and countries and stuff. So perhaps that is, like, the identifying mark. Because he's not... Like, you can change his clothing and stuff, so... It's not his uniform. But did the... I, I don't know. Maybe maybe he's still wearing that. I can't remember. So this Benedicta woman. It's not... Cinematic clash. <laughs> the... Oh, I hate these button mashers. Oh shit, the man disappeared. And he's back. That's a pretty elaborate. Punched his armor, dude. That makes a lot of sense. Oh yeah, thanks Torgal, you were so helpful. And you too, Sid. Really could have used your hand a second ago. But anyway, this Benedicta woman, she is another, uh, she's another dominant. Like, we've sort of come across a number of the dominants so far already. I mean, we had, um, we had Sid there, we have Sid, <laughs> who's demonstrated a power, hasn't he? We've had, um, Clive, of course, is the second a dominant of fire, then you had, um, Joshua, who was the Phoenix. So, Clive is Ifrit. Joshua is Phoenix. Um, Sid here is Rama. Uh, Benedicta, I don't know what the hell she is. But she's a dominant herself. And that big bastard that was in the beginning of the game, that, that Benedicta was dry humping in a hallway, that was Titan. So, we're sort of, but how many, how many uh, different dominants are there? Twelve? Something like that? It's eight? I don't know. Some even number. It's not too big. And we've already run into a number of them. And I guess, like, we're going to be seeing all of them at some point. Well, actually, you know what? There wouldn't be as many as everybody thinks there are because there's two dominants of fire and there might be two... Two of lightning and two of ice. Oh, oh, Jill. It's all Shiva. Jill is Shiva. So, <laughs> gotten to do quite a few of them. How many is that? One, two, three, four, five. Five so far? Okay. We're still very early in the game here, aren't we? You know, you kind of do... It looks nice, but you kind of take something out of the flow of the combat when you go into these QTE sessions. Midnight Raven, this guy had a name? I guess he was a boss, okay. I guess he was a, a bearer. They 
thought we were Imperials. Well, you do look the part. <laughs> Though you fight like a true shield of Rosaria, and one blessed by the Phoenix at that. <laughs> Speaking of which, I wonder, does the other icon of fire give blessings, do you think? You don't believe me. And lo, the creator did make of the elements eight icons to serve as keepers of the one law. Not that I've ever set too much store by holy doctrine, but on that point, it's clear. Fire has always had just the one warden, as of all the rest. A new one can't be born until the previous dies, and even that can take years. The thing is, you don't strike me as a liar. Which leaves but one person who might be able to shed some light on the matter. And they're in Lost Swing. As are our Waluda friends, I would imagine. We should hurry before it gets dark. But what if someone discovers the bodies? Well, then they'll be sorely disappointed. Well, there you have it. At least Sid believes him here, even though it, what he's saying doesn't seem to make a lot of sense to a lot of people. Anyway, this looks like a good place to end the episode, so thanks for watching.